For those that don't know, CAM's most significant area of expertise in revenue cycle, among many, is in coding and billing. And there's been some significant changes in this arena in 2021. So Kim, I was kind of hoping that in this session and in our next session, because it'll probably take two parts, I was really kind of hoping to pick your brain about some of those changes if we could. Absolutely, Taya. So I, you know, one, one thought that I would recommend that folks start thinking about is, are gonna be those activities that are calculated for time when it comes to telehealth services. And we've gotten some updated clarification from the AMA very recently, um, but I wanna take a step back because there's, there's two parts of this clarification. One is the medical decision-making, which we'll probably need to have a two-part series because we definitely wanna dig a little deeper into MDM. But today let's focus on some of the time calculations. So there are several, activities that you can bill as part of your time calculation. So the first is preparing to see your patient. So if you are reviewing notes or procedures, labs, the time that you're taking to prepare to see your patient can be calculated. The other thing to to keep in mind, though, is that when you are billing based on time, it's an either or, right? So you can't bill for time and medical decision-making. It's one or the other. So that's a huge clarification that folks wanna keep in mind. The other thing that's that you can include in your time calculation is going to be um, obtaining and reviewing um, a patient's history. So again, keep in mind that for 2021, your history and physical are not included in your CPT e and scoring level, but you can bill for the time that it takes to obtain and or review the, the separately obtained history. Another time calculation is going to be um, performing a medically appropriate um, examination or an evaluation. Again, it's the time that's associated to it. We're not billing for the, you know, all of those components for the exam, but we can bill for the time. The other thing that is going to be able to be calculated is um, counseling and education, educating the family member, the caregiver, or the, or the patient. Now, you can calculate this time if you're not separately reporting this in another e &M. So, for example, um, if you're billing a care coordination uh, e and &M, that's billed separately. You do not include it in your time. And the other um, factor is going to be ordering meds, um, ordering tests or procedures. All of that time can be included. Another factor is going to be referring your, your patients to other healthcare providers, coordinating patients' care with other healthcare providers um, when it's not separately reported. So keep in mind, if you're reporting this, um, this time in another activity, do not include it in your time calculation for your ENM. Documenting clinical information um, in the EHR or in your patient's health record, that is time that you can calculate for your, your time-based codes. Um, so these are things that, you know, you're, you're doing already. So it's just a matter of making sure that you're documenting that time. And then also the time that it takes for interpreting your results, um, you know, communicating results to the patient, family member, caregiver, all of that time you can include. Keep in mind, though, if you are billing interpretation outside of this e &M, you can't double dip. So that those are the those are the basics for time calculations. Um, the the clarifications. There's three clarifications from the AMA that came out this March. Um, these clarifications are retroactively effective as of January 1st, 2021. Um, the first is um, keeping in mind that if you are reporting any of the activities that I just mentioned, um, not only with the the, the service that you're providing your e &M. but if you're reporting that and billing it separately, please do not double dip. There are going to be times where coming up here soon, we should expect audits. So we want to be very careful about that. 
The other clarification is travel time. It was a lot of buzz about whether or not travel time could be calculated. And unfortunately, it cannot. So keep that in mind. And then the, the final clarification is general teaching and discussions with your team, your care team, um, that's not required for a specific patient. So um, let's say you have a patient or, or just general um, conversation with your care team, and, and this is the physician or the provider, um, having a general conversation about A1C ranges. If it's not, if that conversation and, and education is not specific to a particular patient, it can't be billed to one patient. So those are some of the clarifications that came out very recently. And Taya, I know that, you know, from, from your perspective, you're seeing, you know, a lot of buzz with these clarifications. And I'll just, you know, wonder what, what you're hearing and what you're, you know, what you're thinking as well. Yeah, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot of information. And um, I would, I mean, even just hearing it again, hearing you go through it after yeah. I've read through it several times, it still seems daunting. And, you know, I get a lot of questions on this is a huge change to how we previously documented and build Absolutely. Um, people who are worried about being audited and, and people who really are wondering exactly how the commercial payers are going to respond to this. And if that's something yeah. that they are taking up as well, are they also going to shift to MDM or time, or is this just, you know, something that is taking place with federal payers? And so I would love for you to just reflect on how you see this translating into the commercial side of the fence with the private payers, because I, I think that you addressed the other questions already, but I think this is a question that, that we get quite a bit as well. You know, the, the trend has always been that the commercial payers follow suit with CMS, right? We saw that in, what was it, 2010, when CMS, when Medicare stopped reimbursing for consults right. in the office. Um, so that shift, you know, expect it. Whether or not it actually happens, it, I, I would just recommend that, that you expect it. Um, the, the, the key here, though, is staying in constant communication with your commercial payers and even with your state Medicaid. Um, it's, there, all of these changes are happening because CMS is looking to expand telehealth services because of the public health emergency. So when, when you have you know, the, the industry leader doing that, there, there is that potential that commercial payers are going to follow suit. Whether or not they get it right the first time, who knows, but I do think that, that it's going to be a trend, yeah, that we need to be on the lookout for. Yeah, I would, I would absolutely agree. And so for those that are looking for more information, um, obviously the, the final rule came out from the federal register, you could read through the final rule. But in addition to that, on March 11th, there was some additional guidance that was released, effective back to January. So there is that uh, potential that if you were billing right from jump, on time-based codes only that you may need to go back and evaluate some of those or that CMS may go back and evaluate some of those to see if any of those excluded minutes were included. So if you want that additional guidance, please navigate out to the AMA and take a look at that information that was posted on March 11th. Hey, Taya, I know that you have um, a, a, a huge wealth of knowledge when it comes to optimizing um, software for telehealth care delivery. Do you have any advice for folks on, you know, how to streamline these, these time calculation processes and keeping folks compliant? Absolutely. You know, I, I think one of the things that we typically see is, um, well, it's really twofold. We see a lot of organizations who aren't using their system to its fullest capacity, which is yeah. a, a challenge, or they're not using it the way it was intended to. And then they're frustrated at the byproduct that occurs because they're not using the system the way it was designed. And then the alternative that we see is people picking up third-party systems, but kind of, you know, several of them, and, and then trying to create workarounds to use five and six different pieces of software. And I think really the goal always has to be lean processes, right? Determine the maximum that your in-house system can already provide to you. 
yeah. then determine what your needs are. Don't just go look for the biggest, shiniest third-party software or supporting system. You may not need all that. Determine exactly what your system is lacking. And that's what you need to go in and, and fill with a third-party technology. And so my recommendation would really be while everybody's looking to, to find these third-party programs and companies are are popping up all over the place. You know, we can attach to your EHR and document time for you. Just be really mindful that a lot of services already exist within your in-house systems and you only need to supplement what you don't currently have. So don't pay twice (laughs) is kind of my, uh, my goal with that one. Yeah. Good advice. You know, when I think the, the final tip that I would give about calculating time is thinking about the, the, the time, the time of day that you're going to actually submit um, all of this time that, that you've kind of pulled together for each patient's visit that you are basing off of time. And my recommendation is to do that at the end of the day, right? Because if, you, if you're trying to calculate time, um, you know, right after you see the patient and then, you know, some other lab comes in and you review that you've already, com- you know, you've already documented that. So, so the, from a workflow perspective, think about, you know, what your documentation habits are and what your closeout process looks like and consider having your care team and yourself wrap up all of your time calculations at the end of the day. So you capture everything and you maximize your, your revenue potential. Absolutely. And and to that point, most of what we're doing is being timestamped in the EHR. So talk to your vendors and see what you can do to help supplement by pushing out reports or by adding fields to encounter notes and things like that, that indicate to you how much time you've spent in the record. Um, because the last thing you want to do is, is go through and, and just throw numbers out there that, that aren't potentially feasible. We did see that with one clinic here. We had a a provider who was billing like a level five visit for 40 patients a day. And, and that's more hours than are in the day. So, uh, so yeah, so just be mindful, be mindful to, to be accurate. And we all know that you're working hard, but you definitely want to be accurate so that when you get that payment, you get to keep it. Exactly. You know, the, I, I know I said the, the, the final tip, but I have one more tip. <laughs> um, and, and as, as we are um, kind of publishing our, our podcast series, I'm going to mention this very often is to stay in touch with your your MAC, with your Medicare administrative carrier, um, because they are going to have regional rules that you're going to want to know about, right? Um, And they're also going to have a specific regional fee schedule. So um, we we do have some 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 impending um, CPT codes that are going to be billable, but keep in mind that you want to know what your reimbursement is going to look like, what the RVUs are going to be like for your specific region. So stay in touch with your MAC um, regionally and keep in touch um, with them and, and check out your fee schedule. That is a fantastic tip. And as always, Kim, you can always add multiple final tips because they are fantastic and we appreciate them. (laughs) And I'm sure that all the (laughs) listeners appreciate them as well. So thank you so much to everybody for joining today and come back for episode three, where we're going to be diving deeper into the documentation changes that occurred with this same role. So thanks everyone. Take care guys.